Hi, my name is Don Rayford. Today we're going to talk about carburetor balancing on airhead motorcycles. Our test bed is going to be my R75-6. We have gone through it. We know that the valves are correct and everything is set as it should, with the exception of balancing the carbs. Before you start your carb adjustment, make sure that your valves are set correctly. Six thousandths intake and eight thousandths exhaust. Your timing should be set correctly. Your points, if so equipped, gapped correctly. Your carb float levels in the correct. Your carb needles in the correct position for your specific carbs. Your choke enrichers should be working properly full on and full off. If these settings or adjustments are not correct, you will not get a correct carb sink. Why do you need to balance the carburetors on your airhead engine? The airhead engine has two cylinders. Each cylinder has a separate carburetor. Therefore, each cylinder acts as a separate engine attached to a common crankshaft. If one cylinder makes more power than the other, the result is unwanted vibration. The engine is neither running smoothly nor making maximum power. Adjusting the carburetors so they are balanced makes for a smoother running engine with maximum power output from idle to maximum RPM. A useful book to have is the Bing Carburetor Book supplied by the Bing Agency. It contains excellent information about the Bing carburetors, including needle jet settings, main jet size, and carburetor settings for the Bing manual used on your airhead motorcycle. It also has exploded views and parts list for each of the carburetors used on your machines. The key components of the for balancing the constant velocity or CV carburetors are the idle fuel mixture screw, the throttle butterfly adjustment screw for adjusting the idle speed, and the throttle cable length adjusting screw for balancing them off idle. For much more information, see Brooks Airhead Garage on YouTube for the theory and rebuilding of airhead carburetors. Also, his website by the same name for the details of carb rebuilding. In order to see the jets that we're going to talk about, I will remove the float bowl cover. The, the idle jet is located here. The main jet is located here. Under the main jet is your needle jet. The adjustment for the idle air fuel mixture is here on this carburetor. The butterfly plate opens and closes when you twist the throttle. The venturi is the narrow part of this carburetor in the center down in here. This narrowing of the carburetor passage causes the air to move faster. When the air moves faster, its pressure decreases. This is commonly called vacuum pressure. This created venturi vacuum is above the needle and main jet 
and the float bowl reservoir. This vacuum sucks fuel from the float bowl reservoir, which then mixes with the rapidly flowing air to create a combustionable mixture of approximately 14.7 parts air to one part of fuel by weight. The primary function of a carburetor is to create a combustible mixture of air and fuel at all engine speeds. When the air-fuel mixture inside the cylinder is ignited, the force of the explosion pushes the piston down, turning the crankshaft. More air-fuel mixture in one cylinder, the explosion in that cylinder will be larger, applying more force to the piston. If the opposite cylinder doesn't have the same mixture, it produces less force on the piston. This imbalance of forces on the pistons is felt as vibration. Balancing the carburetors ensures that the same amount of air-fuel mixture goes into each cylinder so the force on one piston is the same, keeping the engine vibration to a minimum. The carburetor is attached to the intake passage of the engine. During the cycle, when the piston travels down and the inlet valve is open, a vacuum is created that pulls air through the carburetor. If the butterfly is fully open, the carburetor sees the full engine vacuum and the largest amount of fuel-air mixture enters the cylinder producing the greatest force on the piston and eventually the highest RPM. When the butterfly plate is barely open, as in the case of idle, the smallest amount of air-fuel mixture enters the engine through the idle circuit. This should allow the engine to idle around 900 to 1100 RPM. Make sure to familiarize yourself with the location of the carb idle adjustment screws and the air fuel mixture screws as we showed earlier in the video. Some folks suggest adjusting the air fuel mixture or your idle mixture before you attempt carb sink. If your machine was running before you started the major tune, it should start and run well enough to sink the carbs. If you are starting from a fresh carb rebuild, then start with the air fuel mixture screws set at the recommended settings in the Bing manual. Before sinking your carburetors, there are some preliminary things that should be done. You want to make sure that your valves are correctly adjusted, six thousandths for the intake and eight thousandths for the exhaust. You want correct rocker arm inflow. You want your timing set correctly. You want your point gab correct. You want fresh spark plugs of the correct type for your motor and your spark plug gap set correctly. Now a note here, you should never use resistive spark plugs in an airhead engine unless you have changed these caps to the low resistance or no resistance caps and even then it's not suggested to be a good idea. As far as the carburetors are concerned, you want proper needle position and to find out about that you get your carb number and go to the Bing manual. It will tell you where to set them. You want the float level set correctly and you want correct slack 
here in your throttle cables two to four millimeters before you start. In setting your valves, you, I'm using a six and seven thousandths gauge. I set it so that the six thousandths will go in and it will hang there so it's not falling out. And then I cannot get a seven to go in. As far as the rocker arm slack, if you move these up and down, you should feel a tiny bit of movement there. The clearance is one to three thousandths. And if you move it up and down, you will feel ever so slight movement. You may see a little oil squeezing out right here, which that tells you that you're moving your rocker assembly. Before you remove your front engine cover, be absolutely certain that you remove the negative post of the battery to disconnect it from the engine. It's generally a 10 millimeter wrench and you can just spin it off and lift these off. I always take a piece of tape so that these cannot contact the battery while I'm working up front. There are two primary methods to balance the carburetors. The first method is to measure the vacuum in the venturi of each cylinder, then adjust the carburetors so both have the same vacuum. This is another vacuum device which can be used to balance your carbs. The second method is to short each individual cylinder spark plug measuring the engine RPM drop. If the carbs are balanced, both cylinders should drop to the same low RPM. This means the force applied to each piston is the same, thereby minimizing engine vibration and maximizing power output. For the shorting method, you can use two extenders made from a spark plug top nut and a wheel spoke. Screw the top nut on the top threads of the spark plug and then push the end of the spoke into the spark plug cap. Then, using an insulated screwdriver, touch the spoke and a fin on the head to short out that cylinder, noting the engine RPM drop. For the shorting method, you can use an external tachometer. You tie one end to ground and the other end goes on one of your coil terminals. And it will indicate the RPM, which is slightly more accurate than the tachometer on the bike. To make your own manometer, you need a yardstick, a 25 to 30 foot roll of 3 16 ID plastic tubing, and about two to three tablespoons of ATF fluid. Depending on the amount of fluid that you have, I like it come about a quarter to a halfway of the yardstick. So I left a loop in the bottom here, which dampens the pulses a bit more, so it's not bouncing around quite so much. And then on the end, I added three or four inches of surgical tubing and then put heat shrink around them to uh, match the two so I have no vacuum leaks. We have connected our manometer to the vacuum port on this carburetor and the other side. So now we're ready to start the engine and see where we are. 
Now that we know everything on our bike is set correctly, we can, uh, we can balance the carburetors or start to balance them. Some people will tell you that you should adjust your air fuel mixture screws before you start this process. In my opinion, if the bike was running, then they should be close enough for you to balance your carbs. Here we have a slight imbalance. Now this carburetor here, which is the left one, needs to either, the butterfly needs to be opened a tiny bit to bring this down, or this one needs to be closed a little bit to pull this back up, the back one. Well, it's adjusted itself. Okay, I'm gonna take up a little slack here that will pull this level down. Look good? Okay, we're going to remove our spark plug cap and we will put on our shorting stick or our adapter and then push this up in so that it's making a good connection. My external tachometer requires two wires. It requires one to the ignition side of the coil. I previously attached this by removing the tank and that goes to the positive side of my external tack. The negative side, we can just put it here on the head so it's grounded. What I'm going to do is put my screwdriver here and then I will short this out by laying it up against it like so. Either side doesn't matter, but as long as you're shorting out that plug. What we're going to do with the external tack, it will give us a reading. The reading is only going to be relative. We don't care what the actual RPM here is. We're using this as an indicator to tell us how much our RPM drops when we short out the spark plug. So now we have synced them at idle using the shorting method. We're going to go off idle and uh, do the same process. <laughs> 